Welcome officially to uh, what I'm going to call on this channel Ancient August and where we're going to spend a whole month playing games from the Ancients period and to kick everything off uh, I wanted to do a, a little tour of my Ancients games collection which you can see spread out here in front of me I've pulled everything off the shelf I'm going to go through them um, very quickly but one by one to show you all the Ancients games that I have in my collection maybe some of the stuff that I'm hoping to play this month and uh, in general I think people um, like to know what kind of games other people like and you may find some things in here that uh, are appealing to you that you may want to try. Um, so uh, let's get on with the tour. I am going to start with sort of the earliest chronologically roughly and go towards sort of the later Ancients periods and I will have some thoughts at the end about what constitutes the Ancients period specifically as we move out of the fall of Western Rome and into uh, what would be called the Middle Ages or the Migration period, however you want to define it. Um, so, so yeah, so as you can see here, a huge selection uh, that I've just kind of piled up and uh, we'll go through these one by one. I guess before we really get into Ancients games, I think we really have to define what is an Ancients game. I mean, technically, this is the most ancient of them all, right? The rise of molecular life, uh, single cell life on Earth. I mean, this is the most ancient. Hmm. So starting with the oldest um, game chronologically, I, I, I would say that this is this is it. This is Western Empires. This was... Um, this is from 999 Games, they're a Dutch company, um, and this is by the same team that did uh, Mega Civ. so if you're familiar with Mega Civ, which was an 18-player civilization game that came in like this massive wooden cube, this is um, their sort of more historical take on that system. So uh, turns in this game are mostly simultaneous, and you're each going to be playing a, um, an ancient empire, basically from the Bronze Age through to some unspecified sort of end ancients, pre like pre-Roman period, I would say, of ancients, but this game plays up to nine players, and as the title would suggest, covers um, Western Europe, essentially all the way from sort of Persia to uh, the Atlantic. There's another game that's coming to Kickstarter. It's a companion game called Eastern Empires, which is going to go all the way to India, and uh, you're going to be able to put the board side by side and play with up to 18 players, um, which is insanity. But this game is uh, very simple, actually, from a rule standpoint, and um, has some pretty interesting mechanics. There is um, there is a warfare, it's very highly abstracted. I don't even know that I would call this a war game, per se, but it is an Ancients game, so I would include it in here. Um, but there's a lot involved with like economics and um, sort of spread, building your population, building cities, trading resources with other players, uh, dealing with disasters that other players might trade you in secret. There's a really funny bluffing mechanic in the trade system in this game, which is really fun. And like I said, you could play it with between five and nine players, so uh, you can get a huge game going. This is definitely one of those good con games if you can get a full nine players. Uh, it's pretty cool. I'll open the box real quick and show you what's inside. And what's inside is just a massive pile of cardboard. Um, here's some of the resource cards. I don't want to pull out the maps because they're at the very bottom, but I'll show you the back of the box. Uh, and these giant oversized technology cards. So as you develop your um, your civilization, um, you have these technology decks, these advancement decks. Oh, they're, I, they're all faced different ways. But basically, they come with, you know, so here's a wonder of the world. And as you uh, score points for your civilization, you get these cards. They give you special abilities. And as, as you go through time, you start to build up a big portfolio of these that kind of change the way that you play the game. And each fa player's faction is going to be different. You know, someone might build a wonder of the world in their empire. Let's say it's the pyramids. That's not in Egypt. It might be somewhere else. But um, f famous uh, famous uh, historical Bronze Age empires are in here. You've got sort of the Minoans. You've got the, the Greeks. You've got the Romans. You've got uh, some other factions. You've got the Celts, I believe, from um, Ireland. So it's a pretty cool game. Um, I played it once uh, all the way through with five players, and it was a lot of fun. I would definitely like to play it with nine. I think that would be just madcap mayhem. Um, and like I said, not a war game. Definitely more of a, a strategy game, even you know a borderline... Um, resource management game i would say but uh, everything is every power is basically they've got ships and they've got population and they've got cities those are your three basic pieces and um it's got a really cool way that your population grows kind of similar to that game barbarian i believe it's called like barbarians or um there's there's a bit of a uh, pax renaissance dna in this game as well let me flip over the box so you can see the map Sorry, I said Pax Renaissance. I'm an Age of Renaissance. If you've played Age of Renaissance, there's some of that DNA in here. But as you can see, you've got uh, all the different types of resources. Here's the map. It's an area game. And as you put your population down, they expand and you can build cities and then you come into conflict with other players. It's a very massive scale and it's very simple to play. And like I said, the turns for the most part are simultaneous. So um, while it doesn't play quickly, it doesn't. it's not as long as it would seem. Um, so if, you've ever, if you could ever get a game of Western Empires or Eastern Empires as, after it comes out or both together, um, I would recommend 
recommend checking it out. I demoed this at Gen Con a couple years ago, and I really liked it, and that's why I pre-ordered it. Um, I have my problems with the publisher and the distributor in America with some of the stuff that happened with the components, but it's all fixed now, and um, this is a game that I'm definitely going to keep and play into the future with my friends who are gamers but not necessarily war gamers to give them sort of a, a little bit of a historical flavor. Now, speaking of the Bronze Age, we do have um, the God Kings, Warfare at the Dawn of Civilization, 1500 to 1250 BC. This is a older um, card-driven game from Compass. It's a four-player game, kind of in the vein of uh, like a Sword of Rome, which you'll see later. Um, it's got similar it's got similar mechanics. I think it uses sort of the base Hannibal system that Mark Simonich pioneered in the 90s um, to uh, and then make some, some changes. But um, I've played this once with my friends, and we all had a great time. Um, it's got some really interesting mechanics to it um, with the way the map is laid out um, and uh, it's pretty simple it's not too complicated I think if you've ever played a CDG you can get into this um, some I know some people don't like it but basically each player takes a Bronze Age power you've got the uh, you've got the Mitanni you've got the Assyrians you've got the uh, Kaysites and you've got there's another one I believe there's actually five actual nations you've got the the Hattie and uh, you've got Egypt as well. And so this is um, this is a really cool system where one of the powers about halfway through the game goes through decline and becomes a different power. And so they're playing kind of a different asymmetric game than the rest of the table. And then um, you've got leaders and they come in for a generation and some leaders are better than others. And there's a randomness about whether when the leader dies. Um, so it's a very strategic view of um, uh, of the Bronze Age uh, near e uh, Middle East. Um, but like I said, it's a, it's a very fun game. It's a card-driven game. The cards are not in the box, so unfortunately I can't show them to you right now. They're somewhere else, but um, but uh, it's it's fun. Um, it's, you know, it's not the best CDG I've ever played. It's, you know, there's, it, but it's not super, it's not bad either. Um, it's, it's a good time for four players. Here's, here's kind of what the map looks like. It's a point-to-point -point map. Um, it looks a little bit like the, um, like the Kingdom of Heaven map. And like I said, it's card driven, very typical card driven. You play for ops or events and you've got your units and there's a lot of combat and uh, it's just in, in general a good time. You're trying to control areas on the map for their resources and victory points and uh, and spread out over the, the Middle East and Turkey. So I highly recommend this if you can find it. You should probably be able to find it pretty cheap and you want something that's a good multiplayer CDG uh, that's sort of in a time frame that it doesn't get gamed a lot, mostly because we don't know a lot about it. Uh, God Kings is, is one that I would recommend. Now, moving into sort of the um, the Grecian Age... Um, after, you know, the, the Bronze Age, sort of the beginning of Western civilization, modern Western civilization. Uh, we've got Polis, Fight for the Hegemony. This is the second edition from Mercury Games. They just released a third edition of this game, which doesn't necessarily change really many of the rules at all, I don't think. Um, it just updates the components, and I think there's a new map. But uh, Polis, Fight for the Hegemony, is about the Peloponnesian War. And it is not a war game. It is a strategy and economic game that does contain combat elements. And it has a, a combat system very similar to uh, Hannibal, where it uses cards um, and, and almost, the, almost the same system. Uh, but as you can see here, you, you know, you've got uh, the, um, the uh, Peloponnesus, uh, essentially. You've got boats. You've got all the things that make the Peloponnesian War that covers the scope of the Peloponnesian War uh, from a military, economic, and political situation. Um, but though it is very heavy on the economic strategy. Um, one of my favorite games that I own, um, and I I know some people don't like this game, and one of the reasons is because the learning curve is very uh, steep. Um, to play this game well, you really need to play it several times. Uh, I still would say that I am competent but not great at it, and, and it's very easy to screw yourself um, early in the game uh, so that you lose pretty early. I mean, the, the victory conditions are, are super tight and cutthroat, and so if you don't know how to play the game well, um, you can just absolutely like bolo your, your campaign. But a great game, um, really interesting. I, I've used this game to get people into historical games because it uses a lot of Euro game mechanics but applies it to a historical context, and so you get this really interesting hybrid of... Um, you know, historical war game um, and sort of more Euro-focused resource management. But I really like it. It's not for everyone. If you're kind of on the fence, if you're primarily a war gamer and you don't play Euros, this would be one that you should try but not necessarily buy. But there is a new edition, like I said, so it should be pretty uh, easy to find. Um, I really think that the production on this is great, and, uh, you know, this is a game I will play at any time with anybody. And, of course, what Ancients collection would be complete without 
commands and colors ancients, the prototypical uh, stalwart of ancients games. You can ignore this. This is not an ancients game. Uh, but we've got uh, all of the expansions here. We've got the uh, base game down there. You can see the commands and colors Napoleonic set as well. Uh, the only thing I'm missing from uh, commands and colors ancients is expansion number five, which GMT has promised is going to be reprinted in the near future, and it feels like it's been that way for a couple of years, but that's the Epic Ancients, that is the two-mapper multiplayer uh, huge version, and I'm very excited for that to play some of the bigger battles, but a really great system. Every time I play it, I always sort of rediscover my love for it. Um, you know, it's simple, but Commands and Colors is tried and true, and uh, everyone can enjoy a Commands and Colors game. There was a point in my life where I was trying to go through every scenario in chronological order, and I believe me and my friend got through um, almost every scenario in the 500s and 400s BC. Um, so we played uh, we played um, Thermopylae and stuff like that, which is pretty... Uh, pretty fun. Uh, maybe one day I'll try and pick that up and keep going through the rest of it. Uh, but there you go. Commands and Colors Ancients. All right, so now we come into the early Roman period. Obviously, Hannibal versus Hamilcar, the phalanx production of the classic Hannibal game, along with the new game, uh, Hamilcar, which is the first Punic War. Um, this game is fantastic. I recently heard some people kind of bad-mouthing this game, um, and yes, it is dated. I mean, it came out in the mid-90s originally. Hannibal did anyways. Um, and But I, I, what it did for the CDG, CDG genre was take it to that next step. You know, if, if, if uh, we the people... Um, was sort of the, the creation of the CDG genre, CDG genre, um, say that five times fast, Hannibal was sort of took it to that next step. And uh, obviously, if you've never played this, it's a point-to-point -point, uh, card-driven game about the Second Punic War, Hannibal's invasion of Italy, and the Italian uh, campaign to defeat him over 20 years. This is a classic. Um, I don't understand the hate this game gets. I understand that like we've had CDGs that have moved the formula forward again, but this is a really pure, in the same way that Andy and Abyss is like a pure coin experience, this is a pure CDG experience. Some of the most thrilling, exciting moments in any war game I've ever played have come from this game. Um, so I, I really don't understand the hate. I think it's fantastic. And uh, again, another game I would play at any time. Hamilcar, which is the, what came with this version, which is the first Punic War, actually is a pretty interesting twist on the system, and it focuses more on naval stuff. Um, and is also a great game in its own right. I played that one once, and I think it's really cool. Um, I love Phalanx, what they are doing with sort of older games and um, their production values and how they're making them sort of accessible and sexy for new audiences is fantastic. They should be applauded for that, bringing new people into the hobby. Uh, Hannibal and Hamilcar, one of my favorite CDGs, and uh, definitely one that uh, is a great one if you've never played a CDG to start with. And so here we have Sword of Rome, um, a CDG uh, for four players. Uh, again, a classic game, a classic game. This is sort of the conquest of Italy, the expansion of Rome, uh, basically in this period here from city-state to um, hegemony on the Italian peninsula. One of the best like four-player war games that ever has been made, in my opinion. Um, <clears throat> here's the map, covers the boot. You've got, it's asymmetric. Everyone's got their own deck that's wildly different from everyone else's. Um, unique powers, uh, really fun, military-focused uh, CDG campaign game. Um, and uh, it's got four factions, but five with the expansion that comes in this deluxe version, which came out in 2010. Uh, you've got the Carthaginians, you've got the Greeks, you've got the Romans, you've got the Gauls, who are, it's like, <laughs> the, the game's sort of, like, um, interesting, like, wildly different faction, where they have completely different mechanics than everyone else. Uh, and then you've got a player that plays the Semnites and the Etruscans, and, um, what fun this game is. We're trying to get a game of this in my local group again, going sometime this summer before it's over. Everyone loves this game. Everyone who I've ever known who has played this game has an absolute blast with it. Um, it, this should be in your collection. If you like CDGs and you like Roman history, uh, there is nothing better than this. This is a just... W I, I don't. I, I run out of superlatives to talk about this game. Um, it is so good. And my personal strategy when I play it is to bring a bottle of wine that is of the nationality of the nation I am playing. I win every time that I do that. Last time we played and I was the Greeks, I brought a Greek wine bottle for the group. I ended up winning the game. Can't go wrong. Definitely do that when you're playing the game. I know it's not in the rules, but uh, it works. Sword of Rome, again, one of my all-time favorites. I don't play it enough, and uh, I should really change that. This here is Donning the Purple. Um, this is a Kickstarter from, I think, a year or two ago. Um, it is not a war game, per se. It kind of has some war game context around it, but um, it's primarily an action-taking game. Uh, but it is historical. Um, not a simulation by any means. It's got more of a historical theme than it is trying to represent any one particular era of history, although it does say that it takes place during sort of the, the crisis of the 3rd century um, portion of Rome. Basically, everyone's trying to become Roman Emperor. There's a map of the Mediterranean. You place your pieces. You take actions every turn, and every um, there's different types of actions you 
you can take, but it's it's primarily a Euro game. There's some card play. Um, combat's pretty pretty coinish, so it's pretty deterministic. Um, but it's fun. There's some there's some sort of uh, treachery and take thatness that you can do to other players. There's also an expansion to play with a fourth player who plays as sort of a military general rather than like sort of a, a noble Roman uh, family, and that kind of adds a, a twist. I really like this game. This is a great gateway game for people who you want to get into historical games who don't want to play war games. I think it's really intelligently designed. I think the rule book needs some work, and it could have used a little bit more development. But uh, overall, it's very fun, and everyone I know who has not. Uh, who has played this with me, who is not a war game fan, has really liked it. Um, and so uh, you can probably pick this up pretty cheap. It's not a huge game. Uh, plays in about an hour and a half. And, uh, you know, if you like Rome, uh, it's got a, a nice flavor to it. Hands in the Sea. This is a uh, a, a Roman, not card-driven, but it is a card war game. Uh, uses the system found in A Few Acres of Snow, Martin Wallace's game about the French and Indian War. Um, it's a brilliant game. It's about the First Punic War um, and it, it, between Rome and Carthage. Um, just a really, it, it's a, essentially a deck-building game that uses uh, war game concepts. So let me flip this over for you so you can see what I'm talking about. If you've not played this, I highly recommend it. It's very good. Uh, this isn't a good view, but basically it's a map of the Mediterranean. Um, you build a, you start with a basic deck based on whether you're Carthage or Rome, and you then draft cards and use those cards to do things like move armies, move navies, fight battles, take control of cities, build cities. Um, there's a little bit of everything in here. So if I can get this off, I'm having to get really good at opening game boxes with one hand. Come on. Um, let's see if I can show you what's in here. Lots of stuff, that's for sure. There was an update kit for this. Um, there's some cool asymmet asymmetry going on. Here are the player boards. Um, you draft cards out of an Empire deck to make your deck better, but then it becomes more bloated, and so you're kind of balancing... Um, you're balancing uh, your the efficiency of your deck, like most deck builders, with um, being able to do what you want. Here's some of the map you can see. The Italian Peninsula. Uh, it's a really fun game. Um, again, another one that war gamers, uh, people who are not war gamers, um, I have found really enjoy, but also war gamers enjoy as well because it's such a great system that came from a few acres of snow. And there's enough little twists here in this um, in this game that uh, sort of add to the formula. I think if you were to ask me which one I like better, I think I like Hands in the Sea more than I like a few acres of snow. Uh, so definitely check it out if you have the chance. All right, so this, uh, coming into sort of the Caesarian period here, um, End of the Republic, this is Caesar's War from Decision Games. This is a folio game, comes in a really tiny uh, envelope. Um, I'll show you. There's a series of two of these that use this system, uh, but here's, here's the other one. But it comes in like a little folio like this with the map and these tiny cards. Um, Caesar's War, and this is about Caesar's campaign. Here are the counters. It's like a half counter sheet. Uh, and it's a point-to-point -point game, card-driven, not in the traditional sense. It uses a, an interesting card-driven system where each player has their own deck, but every turn they just flip it over. You flip over a card, and the card tells you what you can do. So it tells you like who you can move, if you get any reinforcements, and uh, all that stuff. So it's um, very um, interesting and a lot of variety because the cards can come out in any a bunch of different orders. Um, and it's a very short and simple game. We're probably going to tackle this for the first game we do for Ancients August just because... Uh, I like starting with something simple, and then we'll uh, and then we'll uh, move to the more complex stuff. But again, this is about Caesar's conquest of uh, uh, of Gaul against the uh, the tribes, and um, plays really quickly. I mean, it's it's simple. Um, the you know, there's dice combat. You basically attack. You choose a unit in the space you're in, and you attack it. And uh, um, you know, it's nothing too crazy, but again, a good intro war game, and um, I, I like it. It's a good travel game. You know, take it with me if I'm on the road or something like that, and I like the card system where you just flip a card and do something, but uh, it's like four pages of rules. It's like not, not super in-depth, and like I said, there's a companion to this, which I'll show you in a little bit. And speaking of Caesar's uh, conquest of Gaul, we've got Caesar Rome versus Gaul. This is a recent release from GMT, came out last year. Mark Simonich, uh, again, uh, uses his CDG system uh, and applied to Caesar's campaigns. Um, this is a great game. Uh, again, point-to-point -point card driven event or ops. Um, there's some really interesting asymmetry in this game. The player playing the uh, the Gallic the Gallic tribes um, has this whole host of these tribes. They're not very powerful at the beginning, but then their leaders start to come on, and uh, hopefully they've held off the Romans long enough, and they get a chance at the end to kind of counterattack. Um, Caesar, meanwhile, has a huge challenge on his hands, and it's got really interesting victory conditions where the Roman player needs to achieve a certain number of victory points by the end of the game, otherwise he loses. Um, I've seen some comments online about people thinking it's not balanced, but every time I have played this, it has come down to the wire, the final turn, the final moves, and... Um, 
and it makes for just a really tense experience. I kind of liken it to War of the Ring, where that game also is like you play this whole epic campaign, and then right at the end, like it's like how can you make that final push? Can you get right over the edge to win the game? Um, a, a really nice production, um, a great two-player game, um, not too complicated. And if you like uh, Roman history and, and sort of Caesar, this is uh, I think will go down as a a bit of a classic um, in terms of GMT's portfolio of, of card-driven games. The other one I want to show you here is Antony and Cleopatra. So this is. Uh, basically um, the end days of uh, Antony and Cleopatra and basically Antony's war with Octavian. Um, this is a Hollenspiel game, the final war of the Roman Republic, as it shows you here. And I have not played this yet, but um, we are going to play it this month. I'm going to attempt to play it. Um, it's a really interesting game because it is a war game, but it is not necessarily about causing casualties. It's actually about earning prestige for your faction. The basic premise is that you are trying to become sort of uh, the legitimized Roman ruler. And you do that by conquering these provinces here, which you can see this deck of cards. Uh, and there's a, kind of a lot going on here. Um, the rule books, there's a lot of charts. The rule book's kind of thick. Uh, the hexes are nice and big on the map, which is neat. I'll show you more of this when I play it, but this will be a game we'll do this month. And um, you've got these, basically you've got Octavian, who's got a big army in, in Italy, but not a lot else. And then you've got uh, Antony, who's got a ton of troop people loyal to him. He's based in uh, Egypt with Cleopatra, and he's kind of spread around the map. And um, you're kind of posturing against one another. Battle uh, can be very risky, from what I understand, and you're trying to earn prestige for defeating your opponent in battle while not being defeated yourself. So it, it's operational in scope, which we don't get a lot of operational uh, ancients games, and uh, that's why I was excited to play. I've heard good things, um, so we're going to give it a shot, and um, you know, hopefully I'll enjoy it. I don't know how well it will play solo. It seems more like a, there's an element of kind of, like I said, posturing and potentially even bluffing um, here, so we'll, we'll see how it works, but uh, excited to play this. I picked this up a couple of months ago. Of course, when we're talking about Ancients, we also have to talk about Coin, because there have been a number of Coin games uh, a couple at least released with ancient themes. We've got Falling Sky here again, Gallic Revolt against Caesar. You might be thinking, why do I have so many games about Caesar's conquest of the Gauls? Well, they all they all kind of portray something different. Whereas Caesar Rome versus Gaul um, is a card driven game. It's all about the campaigns and and sort of a um, oper you know strategic operational view of that. And uh, you know Caesar's War is kind of a simple get started game. This is a four player asymmetric game about that campaign that is kind of tackles. Some, some different things about it and has a different feel uh, to it um, and kind of shows how the shifting the shifting alliances of different factions affected sort of Caesar's ability to divide and conquer. Uh, one of my favorite coin games it, it simplifies and streamlines a lot of the rules that you started to see in sort of uh, the coin games coming out at the time, Fire in the Lake, A Distant Plane, and brings it back to sort of a more pure experience. And obviously the theme here is fantastic. So um, again, another game I'll play any time. Last time, last couple times I played it, I've met with disaster pretty early. I think in the very first battle, the last game I played of this Caesar died, uh, which put a huge screeching halt to the Roman campaign against the Gauls. Uh, but uh, and a cool alt history results from this as well, right? Like um, uh, what would happen if if the Romans didn't succeed and one of the Gallic uh, factions won? So uh, a neat game. Now, I also, I don't just play strategic and operational games. I do play tactical games. And this here, obviously, is Caesar Conquest of Gaul, Great Battles of History, Volume 6. This is the 2006 version with the notoriously terrible box. Uh, but yeah, Great Battles of History. Um, you, you, you know about this series. This is a tactical battle system about the famous battles in the ancient world, specifically here in Caesar's campaigns against Gaul. GMT is doing a deluxe re print of this game with all of the different um, modules and expansions that came out over the years. So excited for that. I also have the Battles of the Warrior Queen uh, module, which came out, I think, like 15 years, or like almost 15 years after this game originally was second printed. So I've got that as well. That's sitting up there. But uh, the, the deluxe edition of this uh, is one of my most anticipated war games. I've played several scenarios out of here. I really like it, but uh, you know, obviously, there's Great Battles of History is eminently replayable, even with similar the same scenario. So, uh, very excited for that, and I uh, just wanted to show you that I own this as well. Continuing on the Great Battles of History, uh, we're talking about Volume 2, which is SPQR. This is the deluxe edition from 2018. I'm ashamed to say I have yet to play this. Uh, I've had it sitting on my shelf since I received it. The value in this box is absolutely insane. The number of scenarios that are in here. Um, and battles, uh, the amount of content in this box, the, the just the number of components in this box is insanity. Um, I believe this is unpunched. Let me open this real quick. Yeah, here you go. This is a, a virgin copy of SPQR. Um, there are six counter sheets in here, um, full of Romans and barbarians and other Romans and markers and maps. And it just goes on and on and on. Here's some more. Oh, oh, accidentally punched some right there. Here's some more. 
Here's some more um, setup sheets, uh, rule book. One of these days I'm gonna properly get this to the table and uh, get it, get into it and uh, play a bunch of it. But uh, you know, insane value for the money. If you're looking to get into GBOH, Great Battles of History, it's either this or Alexander would be my recommendations depending on which period you like more. Um, if you like Romans, can't go wrong with this. This is hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of gameplay. The fact that this video is continuing on so long should tell you that I really like ancient history. Here we've got a Turning Point Simulations game, one of their uh, 21 uh, Battles That Changed the World series. Uh, this is Chapter 5, and this is the victory of Arminius, the Battle of Teutoburg Forest, 9 AD. I actually picked this up after watching the Netflix series Barbarians, which is absolutely fantastic. If you have not watched it, it is a f just phenomenal historical drama. Um, it's got sort of the, the set pieces in the drama of like something like Game of Thrones, but it's also very um, with an eye towards historical accuracy. And my favorite part about it is the audioscape of that show. Um, all of the Roman characters speak classical Latin and all of the Germanic tribes speak German. So it sounds very similar to what being alive in that period would have sounded like um, to an extent. Um, so anyways, I was looking for, and it's about obviously Arminius's rebellion against Rome in the Battle of Teutoburg Forest, where the Romans lost three legions, three entire legions, and they also lost the, the Golden Eagles um, that were part of those legions. Sparked a whole huge war, um, led to Germanicus uh, coming back into Germany to retaliate uh, like eight years later, and that was uh, that was actually the Emperor Caligula's father. This is a really fascinating period of Roman history. Um, this is the beginning of the I Imperial Roman era, and this game in particular uh, is about uh, Arminius's Battle of Teutoburg Forest. This is an ambush where the Germanic tribes uh, came together, allied, and ambushed three Roman legions who had been tricked into marching um, through a part of Germany that was unmapped and unfamiliar. Here's what it looks like. Here's what the bat. So it's a mounted board. You can see the Teutoburg Forest here. There's some really cool rules around how you set this up. The, the Germanic player gets to set up their ambush um, in the forest however they want. It's almost a free setup. And then the Roman column marches along this road and the they can't do anything other than march along this road. And then the German player gets to ambush when they decide the time is right. And there's reasons why you want to wait for most of the Romans to come on the map. Um, it, I've, I've messed around with it. I have not played a full game, but it looks like a ton of fun. And uh, if you're looking for a game on this side, Subject. There are not very many of them, so uh, this would be one that uh, you would probably be interested in. Um, and definitely watch the show. It's uh, it's a fantastic, really interesting uh, production. So, Victory of Arminius, Teutoburg Forest. All right, finally, the big boy, Imperium Romanum, The Rise and Fall of the Roman Empire. This is the third edition from Decision Games. What a cover, what a box, what a huge number of units <laughs> and leaders, and there are three maps in here, and here's the rule book. Um, this game has been maligned a bit for its rules. I do think it probably needed another development pass, but the, the complaints people have with this game are, are, I think, a little overblown. I have played the first couple of scenarios in this game with a friend, and some of the stuff that people complain about is... Uh, I think unwarranted. This is a perfectly playable game. There are a couple of areas that where the rules are a little unclear and I think they're pretty easy to figure out. Um, and it is epic in all manner of scope and scale. Um, the, just the, the stuff that happens in here, um, there's a lot of, there's bookkeeping if you play some of the larger scenarios where it's like you're also, you know, simulating the economic might of whatever Roman faction you're playing. Um, and that's pretty unique um, in and of itself. Um, but the, the tables are all oversized. You can see here they're full box size, double-sided with tables. There's grain tables and combat tables. There's a whole strategic map so you can see which provinces are controlled or which provinces have roads built in them. And because the scenarios span the entirety of Roman history, um, you get maps with different stuff on them um, and different conditions on them. Let's see if I can pull one of the maps out of here at least. There are three maps. They're these huge, huge maps. This looks like the... Uh, what is this? This is upside down is what it looks like. This is the Western uh, map. So it's got um, Spain and North Africa, Numidia, France, and stuff like that. Uh, this is an operational game. Uh, definitely key, key word operation. Um, it is all about sort of uh, military simulation. So um, it, it does, it, it goes to great lengths to simulate Roman military tactics and operational details that we know about. Um, and I guess the biggest other thing I can say about this is that I am going to try and play this for the channel, well, at least the intro scenario, which is, again, Caesar's Conquest of Gaul. Um, this game, what I have played of it, I have been super impressed by. Again, not a lot of operational Ancients games out there, and uh, this one 
is massive. Here's the scenario book. Uh, there are something like 43 scenarios uh, from all manner of Roman history. Here we've got Theodosius versus Eugenius from the late 300s. We've got uh, Theodosius versus Maximus. We have got, uh, what else is in here? Uh, Constantius versus Mag Magnentius in 351. And I mean, it's just crazy how many how much content is in here. Crisis of the third century. We've got uh, Trajan's Parthian War from the 100s. We've got Trajan's Conquest of Dacia. Um, we've got Caesar's Conquest of Gaul. That's uh, We've got Marius versus Sulla. And what I, what I really like about this is that the game has scenarios uh, for multiple player counts. So I think there's some scenarios in here that are like five players. And this goes all the way. What are some of the later ones? We've got Heraclius in the last Persian War, which is, in my view, and I'll come back to this later, the end of the Ancients Era. I know a lot of people say 476 is the end of the Ancients Era, beginning of the Middle Ages. To me, Heraclius and the Persian campaigns uh, right before the rise of Islam is the end of, of ancient Rome, um, as far as I'm concerned. And so they have that scenario in here, which is very cool. Um, they've also got some of Belisaria. Yeah, they've got Justinian as well. And this one's a hypothetical scenario in 540. If Belisarius had rebelled against him, here's Justinian's reconquest of, of uh, Western Rome. So just as you can see, spans hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. Each scenario is its own standalone um, a standalone thing, so there's not necessarily a campaign here, but each of the scenarios feels like a campaign because they are involved and very long. Uh, there's a lot of interesting ideas in this. Uh, just an absolute magnum opus <laughs> uh, in terms of games, and that is Imperium Romanum, and like I said, this might be the finale of Ancient August. We're going to try and do a scenario solo out of Al Nofi's Imperium Romanum, Rise and Fall of the Roman Empire. All right, and now we come to the end of sort of the classical era of antiquity and into the migration period, which I still consider ancients. This is Invasions, Volume 1, 350 to 650. This was a Kickstarter. Um, I know that there's a ton of controversy about this game in that it was basically unfinished. There's huge holes in the rules. There's huge problems with some of the way that stuff is written. Um, even maybe some of the components or the way that you're supposed to keep track of, of players' resources and control of spaces is um, very difficult to understand. Um, I know that there are some fans that have tried to rewrite the rule book. Um, I'm basically waiting till all of that gets sorted out to play, but on paper, the concept of this is very cool. Each player takes a, um, a series of powers in this time period. So someone might be playing Roman West and Roman East, and then another player might be playing a, a whole bunch of different tribes of barbarians that come into the game at different points. And each faction has its own unique goals that it's trying to earn victory points for. And you as a player, over your combined history of different factions that you play as and migrate across the map, you earn victory points for. Um, I don't have any firsthand experience. I've watched some videos. I've seen some of the frustrations that people have had trying to play this. Um, it looks really cool. Production value-wise, it's really neat. And obviously, the migration period is a period that is very interesting to me. So unfortunately, I can't comment more on that. But um, one day, I do hope to play this with a rule set that is um, at least feels complete and finished. And uh, hopefully, I'll get there one day. But uh, this, is a, this is a neat game that I backed for the concept. I just wish it had been um, the final product had been a little more developed. Coming back to coin, we've got Pendragon, the fall of Roman Britain. Um, one of my favorite coin games, easily the most complex coin game, and about a topic that just does not get gamed nearly enough. This is, again, the fall of Roman Britain taking place sort of late 300s to uh, 600 um, AD basically the collapse of Roman rule on the Isle of Britain and sort of the rise of the various factions that fought to take over the island. You've got the Celts, you've got the Saxons, you've got the remains of the Roman military, you've got the, the British civilian population and, and sort of uh, ruling class. Um, a fantastic game. I think this does so much with the coin engine that other no other coin game has really attempted to do what this game has done. Um, it is a bit of a beast to play, especially the combat system, but if you can get into it, it provides a really, really rich narrative experience and a really cool historical uh, period that is not often covered or talked about. Um, on that topic, um, I do want to make a recommendation here very quickly. One moment. And that is this novel, Eagle in the Snow. Uh, I think these two right here are, are companion pieces in terms of the, the period of history. Um, this Eagle in the Snow, one of my favorite books of all time. Um, it is about a Romano-British soldier who is stationed at Hadrian's Wall, um, sort of during the period that this game takes place, who's a pagan in an in a increasingly Christian Roman world who is asked um, by... Uh, the Roman general at the time, uh, Stilicho, to leave Britain, leave his family, leave his home, and go take a single legion 
um, at the end of the fourth century to the Rhine in Germany and hold back a confederation of a quarter of a million barbarians who want to migrate into Roman territory. It is thrilling. It is historical. It is just one of the best pieces of writing uh, of the Roman period in historical fiction that I've ever read. So if you're interested in this period of Pendragon, there's a lot to love about Eagle in the Snow, and I've been wanting to get this into a video for a long time. Uh, it is a just insanely good book and in fact you could develop a whole coin game about the uh the rhinish campaign as as a uh, the historical rhinish campaign um of the romans uh, that this book takes place in all right so before we get to my final sort of picks in the end of sort of the 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 Ancients era, we'll say. Um, I did want to throw this in here. This is a bit of an honorable mention, but uh, we, I think we often lose sight of the fact that, you know, uh, there is a whole world of history out there. Um, and uh, this is Eternal Dynasty. Now, it doesn't specifically say, you know, there's a, an era of history attached to this, um, but I would, it's definitely Warring States period China. Um, in the 300s BC-ish. Um, and, you know, you can see the art style here does look a little fantastical, and it is a little fantastical and stylized. It's not a historical uh, simulation by any means, but it is a very interesting area control game that takes place in China during this period, um, and it's purely area control, and there's a bunch of different mechanics for controlling areas. Everyone I've played this with has really liked it. This I've never really seen anyone talk about it. Um, it was a Kickstarter many years ago, uh, and it looked interesting to me, and then it never really, I don't know that it ever really found an audience per se, um, but I really enjoy it. I think it's great. Um, it's got great uh, uh, colorful art style. The map is cool. It takes place, like I said, in China, and it's purely area control, um, which represents military and political, so it's kind of a zoomed out strategic view. But I definitely want to throw this in there because it does take place during the ancients period in China. And, um, you know, we don't have enough uh, Eastern um, sort of ancients period games uh, over here in the West. So I, I feel like it's important that we recognize it when there is a game that does tackle those topics and um, are, are actually good games. Uh, so if you can ever if you can ever find a copy of this, um, it's not a war game, but it, uh, it's a good strategy game. And um, I, I really like it. All right, and now we finally come to my favorite era of history, and that is um, the Justinian period of Eastern Rome, the reconquest of, or the attempted reconquest of the West, um, and a very transformational period um, in sort of the end uh, of the ancient world. And I do consider the sixth century still part of the ancient world for a number of reasons. Um, in, in the military space, certainly because of the way that the Roman East Roman army was still organized and still using... Um, uh, doctrine that was established during the ancient Roman period. And so we've got a couple of games uh, that specifically in the era of Justinian tackle this. There is uh, this, this which is Cataphract, which is the reprint that came out a couple of years ago uh, of Great Battles of History. But what I re And so it, it covers a lot of the famous battles of the reconquest. Um, you've got some of the late uh, Western Roman periods against the Huns and the Vandals, I believe. You've also got Dara, which is where Belisarius comes onto the scene and becomes sort of the famous East Roman general that, try that reconquers Africa and, and uh, Italy for uh, the Byzantines, for the East Romans for a brief period. Uh, but Dara and Kalinicum are both against the Persians. Tricamer uh, Tricameron, I think, is also against the Persians. You've got Cena Gallica, which is actually an expansion module to War Galley, the ancient naval game, which I would really like to play but don't own. This is the naval engagement between the Goths and the East Romans off the coast of Italy in 551 near the end of the Reconquest. You've got Tagani, a land battle, and then you've seen me do Casillinum on this channel, which is the uh, Franks versus the East Romans in sort of that period right near the end of the Reconquest of Italy when it was just a, a chaos. Um, but this GBOH game comes with a strategic game called Justinian, which is the strategic level view of his entire reign from 528 to 558. And, um, covers sort of the military aspect of what Eastern Rome was trying to do. Now, I have a special project for this channel plan that I'm going to attempt to tackle in September, which is using Justinian not as a game overview and not as a playthrough necessarily, although I probably will play it, um, but to use it as a historical learning tool. And I want to cover the period between Justinian and the rise of Islam, which is a period that a lot of people in the West don't really know a lot about, um, but to me is endlessly fascinating. And, I, and I'm going to make some recommendations in that video series about uh, novels, books that I've read about it, um, some of the history behind it. I think Richard Berg, who designed Justinian, um, which is more sort of along the lines of his um, like Pax Romana style of system, uh, of game, um, but I think Justinian is actually better than that, um, which it's a very good game. I've played it. Um, he has done a great 
amount he did a great amount of research into making this game and so uh it's a really great historical learning tool as well i have found uh given my personal interest in the era so we're gonna we're gonna look at basically the reign of justinian starting in 528 all the way through to the rise of islam in the early 600s that 100 year period that was so transformational uh in the western world but anyways cataphract fantastic game my favorite great battles of history game because it has justinian in it um and uh yeah it's just it's just fantastic package highly recommend this We've also got this, which is a game I have never seen anyone really talk about because it is a strategy and tactics magazine game by, I think, Joe Miranda from 2002. I had to hunt this down on the internet. Um, it's called Belisarius, The Byzantine Empire Strikes. Um, I have not played it. I have not read the rules, but I'm going to. We're going to attempt to play it either this month or next month. But it is a hex encounter game about the same period, about the Justinian, the reign of Justinian. And that is so sexy to my ears because I love the period. Here's what the map looks like. Um, it's a single counter sheet. Uh, I believe we've got the Byzantines in purple, it looks like. Yeah, that's or this might be the Praetorian Guard. Got Ostrogoths, you've got Vandals. I think the Byzantines are up here. Um, looks pretty cool. Um, and I've never seen anyone cover this or talk about it. I bought it specifically because there is literally no content on the internet about this. Uh, by Joe Miranda and Joe Yaust from 2001. It was in a 2002 edition of this magazine. So we're going to clip it and play it. It's I, <laughs> I don't know. The fact that I was able to find this kind of easily tells me that uh, it doesn't... I don't know if it just wasn't popular or it's not a good game and you know who, who knows the strategy and tactics but we're gonna find out um because I do like this era and I wanted to own some other games um on this era partially because for research because I was actually designing a game about the reconquest of the west uh, uh that is on hold right now because I'm working on something else but uh, I one day hope to get back to it because this period is my favorite period in history Belisarius's War. This is the Decision Mini Folio game, the Roman Reconquest of Africa, 533 to 534. I showed it you the cover a little bit earlier, but again, this is that mini CDG system, specifically focused on the initial phases of Justinian's Reconquest, and that is taking Africa back from the Vandals, which, uh, if you watched any of my great campaigns in the American Civil War videos, you know I think would make for an absolute fantastic um, topic to take the great, great campaigns of the American Civil War system and apply it to the ancient world, because everything about about this campaign was all about confusion and stolen marches and uh, great campaigns in the American Civil War is has a focus on maneuver this would be a fantastic uh, way to take that system into the ancient world again very simple um, it's about Belisarius's reconquest of the uh, of North Africa like I said so uh, you know a nice intro war game you can see not a huge number of counters here are the Romans here are the we've got some Huns um, and yeah, here's Gellimer. He's one of the one of the leaders. Um, so you know, not super flashy, uh, but uh, pretty quick to play. Not gonna play this one this month. Uh, although I might play it next month when we're talking about this era uh, for my special project. But I hope you enjoyed that look at all of my Ancients games that I've got here. Those aren't Ancients, that's World War II. All of these Ancients games that I've got going on. I really enjoy my Ancients collection. Um, I'm always on the lookout for more Ancients games, um, specifically ones that tackle the subject in sort of not using modern uh, game mechanics. So, um, you know, if it's an operational Ancients game, that is a really functionally different way to, to look at Ancients Warfare um, as opposed to modern operational games, right? Um, so yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this tour of my Ancients library. Um, we're going to play some of these in this month and, uh, hopefully learn a little bit more about them. And then, like I said, I'm going to move from that into a, uh, East Roman, early Byzantine sort of historical examination of some of the stuff that happened, uh, in the hundred years between Justinian taking power and the rise of Islam, uh, in the Middle East and the fall of Persia, which I think is, is again, so, so fascinating and so undergamed and underexposed, um, in sort of the Western world. So uh, thank you for joining me, uh, and if you have any recommendations, please leave them in the comments. I am always, always on the hunt for new games that you like or things that people find uh, highly enjoyable. And uh, yeah, I will see you for Ancients August, officially kicking off with this video. We're going to move right into Caesar's Conquest of Gaul.